All right. A few weeks ago, I was asked to officiate at a bar mitzvah. But as the day got closer, I started to think about what I wanted to say, what kind of message I wanted to impart. And I knew that I couldn't just phone it in. I always hate the thought of wasting people's time with empty words. It's like Jerry Seinfeld says about stand-up comedy, which I hold to be true of all public speaking. You must constantly justify why you are the only one talking while a room full of people sit quietly. You must constantly justify why you're the only one speaking while a room full of people sit quietly and listen. So there I was, faced with this dilemma. How to give a speech that I felt was worth people's time to listen to, you know, a unique experience they could not get anywhere else from anyone else, and to connect with the bar mitzvah boy and make him feel good in a way that went beyond the usual platitudes. Except this wasn't your average bar mitzvah. This family had been through a lot, Let's just say the word divorce hung in the air like an unwelcome guest. And I decided to address the elephant in the room, which was the family's divorce. Now, before you think I completely lost my mind, I know this could have been strange, even inappropriate to bring up divorce on such a joyous occasion like a bar mitzvah. But I had a feeling that by sharing a bit of my own story with the bar mitzvah boy, that my parents also got divorced when I was seven years old. And then my dad remarried and I had step siblings to get along with. And it was a confusing and sometimes even embarrassing situation to be in when I compared myself to all my other friends who all seemed to have quote unquote normal childhoods. And I wanted to convey that to the bar mitzvah boy that the love that I see his mom and his dad and his stepmom and all of his extended family all have for him knows no bounds. And that The house that he started off in may have now divided into two, but the care and the concern that everyone has for him is greater than some of all of its parts. So it was a risk I was willing to take in order to offer a different type of speech than people might be expecting. But honestly, it was terrifying. I wrestled with the decision whether to include this part of the speech or to leave it out for days. Even in the last few moments leading up to the speech, I was still going back and forth on it wondering if I was crossing a line or maybe I was making a huge mistake. But in the end, I went with my gut and it worked really well, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now, I wanted to try something new and totally different for this episode because here at the Magid Method, we're always on the cutting edge of things. And I had heard about an AI feature that takes documents and turns them into podcasts. And that intrigued me. I took all of the events leading up to during and after the speech and all my thoughts and feelings surrounding it, dumped it into a PDF document, and then I uploaded it into Google's Notebook LM, which is an AI tool, and it churned out a short AI-generated podcast, which made me fall out of my chair when I heard it. So what you're about to hear is a debrief of the bar mitzvah speaking experience I just told you about, and I want to play it for you now. This is two totally generated AI hosts breaking down the experience I just described based solely on a document that I uploaded. I didn't do any prompting or regenerating to get it where it is today. This was the first time output and the feedback I'm getting from people who hear it, they say this is crazy, off the charts, unbelievable, and they're all right. It's all of that. So here it is, the first, who knows, I don't know, maybe the first of many, maybe the last, totally AI-generated episode of The Magid Method. Ever been to a bar mitzvah? And the speech, like, totally steals the show. Oh, yeah. Not just, you know, it's a good speech, but, like, steals the show. Right. Leaves everyone speechless. Yeah. Get ready, because that's what we're diving into today. Um, hmm. Impactful public speaking. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about authenticity and vulnerability a lot. Sure. But... This deep dive, this is next level. It's amazing how one speech, yeah. like in this case, a bar mitzvah speech can yeah. be such a powerful example of communication. It really is. And this isn't your typical, you know, Mazel Tov speech. Right. We are dissecting a personal debrief Yeah. from the speaker. Okay. So we're really getting into like their head, yeah. the unique challenges that they faced. Yeah. I think what's so interesting about this deep dive, I mean, the context is really unique, but this speaker's journey, I think it applies to anyone, anywhere. Totally. It transcends for sure. Absolutely. So this speaker, they had this credo. Okay. Almost like a mantra. 
justify your presence. I love that. Like if you're going to get up and speak, yeah. you better have a darn good reason. You better bring it. You better bring it, yeah. It reminds me, have you ever seen that Jerry Seinfeld bit? Oh, yeah. Where he's talking about like, yeah. why you're the one with the microphone. Why am I listening to you? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we've all been there. Oh, 100%. Stuck in a meeting, you're like, why? <laughs> why am I listening to this? It's true. And especially now, right? Yeah. I mean, we are just inundated with content, with information. Yes. Information overload. So mm-hmm. preach. If you're going to keep someone's attention, yeah. it's got to be more than just like spitting out facts. Facts and figures, yeah. That they could find anywhere. Exactly. And I think the speaker was really keyed into that. Like whatever you're doing live, it's got to be something unique, something you're not going to get from a transcript or reading it online. Totally. And that's where this whole v- vulnerability piece comes in. Okay. They actually quote um, James Ulcher. Okay. Yeah. The blogger, entrepreneur. Yeah. And he says... I never hit publish unless I'm afraid of what people think of me. Wow. Oh. Powerful. He yeah. is scary. Yeah. Yeah, he's, for those who don't know, he's incredibly open. About his struggles. Money, personal stuff, puts it all out there. And I think that's what makes his work so relatable. It's like he's not afraid to bleed on the page, you know? It's true. And I think we can all sense when something's inauthentic. Mm. Or like someone's being fake. Oh yeah, a mile away. But like when you get that genuine, yeah. like warts and all, that's what cuts through. One hundred percent. No, this isn't about like you know spilling your guts at every meeting. Right. Don't worry. Not oversharing. Not oversharing. But it's about like what's your level? Yes. What feels significant to you? Yeah. What's important enough to you that you're willing to like risk a little discomfort yes to get it out there and that's that's where the magic happens that's where the good stuff is okay so picture this our speaker gets asked to officiate this bar mitzvah okay for a family friend mm. <laughs> sounds simple enough right yeah but there's a catch it's a blended family okay and let's just say there's some uh history ah a little bit of history okay cool. history there so we've got we've got that dynamic the elephant in the room. We've got an elephant in the room. Right. And this is where it gets good. Okay. So the speaker's like, how do I stay true to this whole thing? Right, this yeah. This credo yeah. of like being authentic, delivering something meaningful. Right. But like, how do I navigate this family situation? Right. Which I think we've all been there. All the time. Where it's like, how do I honor my truth? Yeah. But also be sensitive to... To everyone else. Yeah. The people around me. So what do they do? Oh, okay. They make a choice. A bold choice. Okay. Address the elephant. Head on. Wow. Head on. They decided to talk about the parents' divorce. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you imagine? At a bar mitzvah. At a bar mitzvah. Mm-hmm. The guts. Wow. And and they even talk about like lying awake the night before, just like wrestling with this decision. <laughs> sure. Because that's the thing about vulnerability. It's, it's scary. It's yeah. putting yourself out there. Totally. But I think often the things that we're most afraid to say yes. are the things that are going to resonate the most. hundred percent. Oh, I'm getting anxiety just hearing about it. Right. So how? Yeah. How did they pull this off? Well, okay. First of all, it's not like they just, you know, by the way, divorced. Dropped a truth bomb in the middle of the in the middle of the speech. Yeah, surprise. And and left. Yeah. You know, it was very it was very um, calculated. Well thought out. <laughs> okay. Remember this idea. Yeah. Justify your presence. Yeah. Don't waste my time. <laughs> they really give me something good. Wanted to say something of value. Offer something unique. Okay. To that audience. So instead of ignoring the elephant, they're like, let's. So, so they, well, they dress it, they wove it in okay. to a larger narrative Okay. about resilience, right? The complexity of family, yeah. the fact that love endures, all that. But with humor, right? Well, think, think about it. Because it's still a bar mitzvah. What better way to I deal with that, tension, to make, to make a difficult topic approachable sure. than with a little well-placed humor? I guess that's the fine line though, right? It is a fine line. You gotta cut but it. they walked it. Okay. They walked it. They started by, you know, acknowledging okay. all the different family members. Kind of a little Some a little wink and a nod to the elephant. Right. Okay. But then but then got really personal and talked about their own childhood. Oh wow. With divorce. So they're like, I've been there. I get it. 
I get it. And they talked about, you know, navigating two different households and how different it felt. Oh, yeah. And I think for the bar mitzvah boy in particular, even if he hadn't articulated it. Yeah, for sure. That really resonated because he was living that. It's like sometimes the most powerful messages are the ones that like we haven't even said out loud. Right. But but someone's acknowledging, I see that. Totally. And so he creates this space for this young man, maybe other people in the audience, right. to well, feel seen. Seen, understood. And that's where the humor comes back in. Okay. You know, talking about, um, you know, figuring out how to play the parents against each other for better birthday presents, <laughs> right? <laughs> a little self-deprecating, okay. a little relatable. It just shifts the energy. Because it's real. Like yeah. we all we all know someone or we've been in that situation. You've been there. Yeah. And it's funny. And you can laugh about it. It is funny. Yeah. Sure. And it doesn't diminish, you know, what's going on, but it's like it's an acknowledgement. Hey, we're real people. We're all human. Yeah, let's let's laugh together for a second. Exactly. So what was the feedback like after it? People must have been, like, blown away. Oh, they were. They were. People were coming up to them afterwards, like, that was the best bar mitzvah speech I've ever heard. You know, praising the courage, the honesty. It's amazing what can happen when we just, like, push through that fear. It's true. And we're like, this is this is me. This is my truth. Yep. And I think what's interesting, too, is it wasn't just, like, a one-off for them. Right. Like this wasn't just about this speech. It wasn't about the shock value. No. This was about who do I want to be? Right. How do I want to show up? This is this is me and I'm going to be me. Even when it's uncomfortable. Yeah, even when it's hard. And and I think that's what resonated so much. And it wasn't lost on the people around them. This person actually mentioned that a colleague of theirs yeah. heard about the speech and was like, "Yeah, I expected nothing less." Wow, that's that speaks volumes, doesn't it? It does. It's like, I trust you to show up. Yes. I trust you to be you. To be real, even when it's hard. Which is huge. That's everything. Yeah, that's everything because that's where that connection is. <laughs> that's the good stuff. It actually, it reminds me of a story about Billy Crystal. Oh, I love him. <laughs> no, What's God. the story? Okay, yeah, Billy Crystal, what's the story? So early in his career, you know, he's doing great impressions, yeah. killing it. Audiences love him. Yeah. And after this one, like, particularly successful set, yeah. his manager, legendary Jack Rollins, okay. pulls him aside. Uh-oh. And he's like, you're playing it too safe. Oh, no. You're hiding. Really? Even though it was, like, working? Oh, yeah. Killing. Wow. But he's like, you're hiding behind the toys and games. Wow. So even though it's, like, technically brilliant? Technically, yeah. It's all there. Yeah. But he's like, no one's getting... Like, who you are. Interesting. You never say, I think or I feel. Yeah. You're so busy being other people. Wow. That you're not actually, like, letting yourself yeah. connect. And I bet a lot of us do that. Totally. In our own ways, right? Oh, percent Like, whatever our version of, like, toys and games is. Like, you know, some people it's jargon. Right. Some people it's flat, this persona. Totally. And we think that's what people want. But maybe what they really want is just. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like little bit of you to connect with yeah and it's a risk right yeah putting yourself out there being vulnerable it opens you up to criticism yeah. but it also opens you up to this whole other level of connection yeah that you just can't get otherwise and our bar mitzvah speaker mm -hmm. i mean they were willing to do that right <laughs> totally. like be real yeah this is me this is my truth and it might be messy and it might be awkward it might be hard but it's real and and look what happened it's powerful it's powerful so i think the question is you know, where are we playing it safe? Yeah. Where are you holding back a little bit? Yeah. What would it take to just be a little bolder? A little more you. Yeah. In in how you communicate. Yes. A little more you. It doesn't have to be like this big, you know, dramatic thing. Totally. Maybe it's just telling a story. Yeah. In a work presentation. Or just like saying how you feel in a hard conversation. Absolutely. Just yeah. a little a little peek behind the curtain. Exactly. This is who I am. Yeah. So as we um kind of wrap up this deep dive yeah the question is what's that one like little act of courage right what's one little thing you can do today that you can do today to just be a little less guarded a little more real a little more you a little more you remember authenticity it's not about perfection yeah. it's about connection that's a good one <laughs> okay we'll leave you with that there you go Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into this, like, truly unforgettable bar mitzvah speech. Unforgettable. I'll see you next time. Okay. I know. 
The female co-host's banter and tone get a bit annoying to listen to after a while. But this is next-level futuristic stuff we're dealing with, so I'm willing to overlook that, at least for the time being. We are truly living in some fascinating times. It makes me wonder what life's going to look like in just 10 years from now. Okay, that's it for me. As always, I'm Daniel Steinberg, joined today by my two AI co-hosts. Let's call them Brad and Jessica. I don't know. And you've been listening to The Moggit Method. There's a secret that great public speakers know. Did you know there's a method for cutting straight through to an audience's heart, grabbing their attention and holding it? and making a memorable impact with your presentation? The best speakers in the world utilize it, and now you can too, every time you get up to speak. Download your free Magid Method of Public Speaking template at magidmethod.com, M-A-G-G-I-D-M-E-T-H-O-D.com. The Magid Method will teach you how to find your authentic voice, craft meaningful presentations, manage people's attention, and build unbreakable bonds with your audience. Go to MagidMethod.com and download your free copy now.